Hey, what's up kiddos, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to set up Voice Meter Potato. Voice Meter is easily the best free digital audio mixer available out there. It allows you to plug in all your favorite programs like Discord, TeamSpeak, Spotify, and manage the audio levels for each individual program. Voice Meter Potato can look intimidating at first, but it's actually a fairly simple program to get set up. Should only take a couple minutes to get the basics down. Let's get going. Okay, so first and foremost, you're going to want to download the Voice Meter Potato software. I'll put a link down in the description that will link you to the VB Audio website. You're gonna have two options. You can either download the zip file or the exe file. I personally always opt for the exe file, a little bit easier. After downloading, go ahead and install. As you can see, I got an error since I already have Voice Meter installed. When you install Voice Meter Potato, it will install its own proprietary audio drivers and you will have to reboot once the install is completed. So before we actually get to the mixer itself, we're going to have to go into the Windows sound settings. This is where we will set voice meter to be our default input and output device. So there's two different ways you can get to your Windows sound settings. One way is going into the bottom right hand corner of your desktop in the system tray. Right click on this little speaker down here, click sound settings. The second option is you hit the Windows key, type in sound settings. Usually if you type in sound, it should pop up automatically and then hit enter. And with your sound settings open, we'll look at your output device first. You're going to want to select voice meter input. And if you scroll down a little bit, now we're going to choose the input device. Here we're going to choose voice meter aux output. The voice meter aux output is basically what's going to replace your microphone. So if you're using any recording software or any game that allows you to choose your mic or audio device, the voice meter aux output is what you're going to want to select. All right, now that we got that set up, let's go ahead and jump over to the mixer. So you may be looking at this thing and thinking, what the hell did I just install? There's a lot of buttons, faders, knobs. It can be pretty intimidating at first, but hopefully this will kind of break it down to where it's a little easier to understand. In the top right hand corner, you'll see a section that says hardware out. This is where we're telling voice meter to send all of the audio out to. You'll see five boxes listed A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. For the sake of this tutorial, we're only going to focus on the A1 dropdown. Voice Meter does allow you to split audio between different devices. So if you wanted to have one audio feed going to your headphones, another one to a set of speakers, that option is available to you. But we'll save that for another video. So when you click on the A1 box, you're gonna see a list of devices. You're going to see different variations of the same devices. You'll see WDM, KS, MME. They're just different audio formats, but WDM is the best because it offers the lowest latency. So you'll want to find your audio device, rather that be headphones, or in my case, I'm going to be choosing my Behringer audio interface. Next, we're going to move over to the hardware input section of the mixer, and we're going to be setting up our microphone. So when you're looking at hardware inputs one through five, you kind of have to picture in your mind that these are actual physical plugins on an actual mixer. Now below all of our A bubbles, you're going to see bubbles B1, B2, and B3. These are all directly correlated to the virtual inputs section of the mixer, which is in the middle. So if you're asking yourself, well, what are these virtual inputs? Well, remember back in the beginning of the video where we went into our window settings and we selected our audio output and input devices? You'll notice up top here, they share the same verbiage. B1 will always be equal to our default output device and B2 will always be equal to our default input device, i.e. our microphone. B3, don't worry about B3, nobody uses it. What I like to do because it actually makes it easier for me, I'll rename each of these virtual inputs so I know exactly what they do. I'll name this one desktop, this one microphone, and this one do not use. Another cool feature of Voice Meter Potato is that you can actually add a compressor or a noise gate to every channel if you need to. Uh, they also give you this color panel here where you can EQ your voice, add effects, pretty straightforward. Also to make it a little easier to remember what is what, you are able to name each channel. All you have to do is right click where it says hardware input one and I'll be typing in microphone. Next, we're gonna select the input device that we want to be routed to this channel. Go ahead and click on the text that states select input device. And of the items listed, you're either going to want to select your USB microphone, or once again, in my case, my audio interface, which is the Behringer. And as a reminder, you always want to select the WDM. Now, if you immediately start hearing yourself, don't be alarmed. Next to your fader, you're going to see a bunch of bubbles listed with A1 through A5 and B1 through B3. 
Now, if you remember back to the first part of this tutorial where we selected our hardware output, we selected our hardware output device under option A1. Now, if you look back at the bubbles that are selected on your microphone's channel in the mixer, you'll see that the A1 bubble is selected by default. So in each one of these channels, you'll see the A1 is actually defaulted for every single one. If that bubble is checked off, the audio that is being fed into that channel will be routed to whatever your hardware output device is. But if you're like me and you don't like hearing the sound of your own voice, you're going to want to uncheck the A1 box for our microphone's channel. When you select your microphone, you may notice that Huh, why is audio only coming out of one ear? To fix this, you'll need to click the mono bubble at the bottom. But when it comes to routing the audio from our microphone correctly, you're going to want to select the B2 bubble. So now anytime that you need to use your microphone in a program like Discord, or maybe if you're playing a game that will allow you to select your audio input device, you're going to want to select the voice meter aux input because we've routed the audio from the microphone to that specific virtual input. So in short, B1, goes to desktop audio, anything B2 goes to your microphone. And with that, now you have voice meter all set up and ready to go. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like and subscribe. We'll have some more voice meter tutorials coming your way. I also stream Friday through Sunday. You'll find my Twitch link down below. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.